Welcome back to the Amateur Extra License Study. This is Element 4. That is the Amateur Extra is Element 4, Sub-Element 5 Alpha. And now we have some electronic speak here. I'm going to go ahead and transition into the calculator because we are going to be doing some wonderful math. So we're going to go ahead and clear out the calculator so there's no history. And let's read the first question. What can cause the voltage across reactances in a series RLC circuit to be higher than the voltage applied to the entire circuit? And that is going to be at the resonance, the resonant frequency. So a little bit of electricity for you. Inductors store a charge in a magnetic field. And if you apply AC to that inductor, as it goes positive, it's trying to fight it as best it can. But then it gets a little bit of magnetic field, then it crosses that zero, and that field collapses, inducing a back EMF. Well, then it goes negative. Now it's going to go this way and produce back EMF. Well, the capacitor is going to start charging up with that. At resonant frequency, that capacitor is charging a whole bunch of good stuff. So the voltage could be higher than the power or the voltage that you're supplying to it. Alrighty, so let's go on to the next one. What is the resonant frequency of an RLC circuit if the resistance is 22 ohms the inductance is 50 microhenries and the capacitance is 40 picofarads. You get to neglect the resistance in this. Now, I, I made me a nice little delete later, but the formula that you're going to use is 1 divided by the entirety of 2 pi times the square root of the inductance times the capacitance. And I, I work these out over here. But I'm also going to show you this on the calculator, how you can figure this out. We start out with 50 microhenries. If you remember your scientific notation, a microhenry is negative 6. Micro is negative 6. So we're going to go negative 6 times, now we have 40 picofarads. Pico is negative 12, so 40 e and we're going to go negative 12. Now remember, the next step is to take the square root of the product. So now we're going to use the square root of that. Then we multiply times 2 pi, which is 6.28. And then you have to take the reciprocal. So 1 divided by 2.8 times 10 to the negative 7. Well, there's a reciprocal button, most of your scientific calculators. You can't use your cell phone on the test, I'm sorry, but you can use a scientific calculator. That gives us 3,560,617 hertz. Now, if you want to convert that to megahertz, you divide by 1 times 10 to the 6. That is a million. Now you have 3.56 megahertz. There's your answer. Scrolling down, I'm going to minimize the calculator for just a minute. What is the magnitude of the impedance of an RL, a series RLC circuit at resonance? That's going to be approximately equal to circuit resistance. That's just one of those bad boys you got to remember. And guess what? It's going to be exactly the same for a parallel RLC circuit. So the very next question, what is the magnitude of the impedance of a parallel RLC circuit at resonance? And that is approximately equal to the circuit resistance. There's some math to figure that out. I don't think it's that important. Just remember it. What is the result of increasing the Q of an impedance matching circuit? We'll see this math in a minute. The matching bandwidth is decreased. If you start with a really low Q, the bandwidth is going to be really wide, but honestly, it's going to be terrible. So as you increase the Q, you start to get those sharp edges, 
and your bandwidth is decreased as that Q increases. So they are directly proportional. Lower the Q, bandwidth is increase they're inversely proportional i'm sorry inversely proportional as that q increases the bandwidth decreases so apologize for that oversight what is the magnitude of the circulating current within the components within the components of the parallel lc circuit at resistance so that's l your inductor parallel with capacitance and they're connected it is going to be at its maximum. The current will be at its maximum inside that uh, those two components. The very next question says, what is the magnitude of current at the input of a parallel RLC circuit at resonance? The magnitude at the input is going to be at its minimum. So, Maximum within the components, minimum is at the input. What is the phase relationship between the current through the current through and the voltage across a series resonance circuit at resonance? The voltage and current are going to be in phase. The voltage and current are in phase. So the way this works is you can kind of remember this with Eli the Iceman. This is just in general. Eli is for the inductor. So voltage E leads the current in an inductor. Voltage leads current. So the voltage comes first and the current comes after it. They're out of phase. The Iceman current leads voltage in a capacitor. So that's ICE. And if you think about it, capacitors charge. They charge. So the current's going to be really high first as the voltage is rising in, in a uh, capacitor. So that's a lot. Eli the Iceman, please remember that. That's going to help you out later on. How is the Q of an RLC parallel resonance circuit calculated? This is something else you want to remember is resistance divided by the reactance of either the inductance or capacitance. So resistance divided by the reactance of either the inductance or capacitance. Just something else you probably need to remember. All right, we got another math problem. Let's see how this works. Bring in the calculator back. Okay. Remember, the formula is 1 divided by 2 pi, 6.28, times the square root of the product of L times C. So, remember your scientific notation for this because you have to put it in Henry's and Farad's. That's the way this formula works. So 50 microhenries is 50 E, and that is micro is negative 6 times. We have 10 picofarads. Pico is 10 to the negative 12, so 10 E to the negative 12. You're converting these to their units at this point. That's why they're decimals. So when you multiply those two, you get a really tiny, tiny number. Now what you need to do is take the square root of those two. Because remember, we're taking the square root of the product of L times C. Now, you're going to multiply times 2 pi, 6.28. And at this point, we have figured out the whole bottom section now we need to go 1 divided by that. That's just taking the reciprocal. So we're going to go 1 divided by what we have there. Now we have 7,121,235. To get your answer in megahertz, all you have to do is divide by 1 million, which you could either type in a million or do 1 times 10 to the 6. 
and now you have 7.12 megahertz. Let's clear that out. We have a new one now. What is the half power bandwidth of a resonant circuit that has a resonant frequency of 7.1 megahertz and a Q of 150? Now this one is actually pretty easy. I figured this one out without even looking it up. You just take your 7.1 megahertz. So we're going to put this in as 7, 100, just like that, 7.1 million hertz divided by the Q, which is 150. That gives you 47,333. Now, if you want to convert that to kilohertz, divide by 1,000, 47.3 kilohertz. There's your answer. So if you can look at these numbers and be able to read the scientific notation off of them, that's going to make you a master at this particular sub-element. Now, here's the beauty. You're only going to see one of these questions on the test. Which one do you get? playing roulette with it. All right, let's do the next one. Same thing, 3.7 megahertz. We have 3.7 megahertz divided by 118. We have 31,355. So divide by 1,000 gives you 31.35. So they rounded up just a smidgen, 31.4 kilohertz. And the last question is just, just memorize it. I promise you, unless you're going to go into some serious electrical engineering, 5-alpha, you're never going to use. What is the effect of an increasing Q in a series resonant circuit? So as the Q rises, so do those internal voltages. So that is the answer. What is an effect of increasing Q in a series resonant circuit? Internal voltages increase. It becomes more efficient, I suppose. Alrighty, so we muddled through that one. Uh, if you need to watch it again to get some of the formulas that I did use for this, or if you need to uh, just memorize the answers, take it and give it another gander. I'm Robbie W1RCP. Like and subscribe. 73.